Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of UI Tutorials. And as you can see, this is my first episode with Facecam, finally. In this episode, we're going to learn how to apply the horizontal layout for the upper buttons. And uh, also knowing how to toggle between selected button and unselected button, theoretically only. Alright, let's see how it works. So the first thing we can do here is make this whole layout much more friendlier. So before I had this set up on the left and right side, but I came to notice that it's a bit annoying if you work on one screen. So instead of hiding this in the right in the scene, instead of hiding this in the editor scene, just keep it on and reduce this to uh, reduce the alpha of the preview image to 0.2 probably 0.3. Yeah, I think 0.2 is enough. So you don't have to worry about hiding and showing it over and over again. You can just put all the elements and see the reference in the background. Let's start by applying this top button panel. So in this panel, we have a list of buttons with specific text inside of them. And uh, we have two states, which is the default and selected. And we can choose the colors however we want, but I'm, I'm going to go with the same colors as if, you know, like half transparent and then opaque yellow. Let's start. First thing we need to do is we need to do the same steps as we did in here. We have to create a panel container, which is going to be an empty game object. Let's call it top um, panel. Actually, not top panel, top buttons. Again, you can do this manually. I mean, change the anchor. First of all, let's move this whole thing upwards. You can cho choose the anchors manually, which is not a bad way of doing it, but I'm, I like having solid numbers. So when I do this manually, I need to play with the values here. For example, this is the minimum X anchor and the maximum X anchor, and both the minimum Y and maximum Y are supposed to be something. So 0.28. Yeah, that's fine. And the last is 0 0.71 or 7, 7, 2. Okay, that's fine. For the Y minimum, let's go 0 0.88 and 0 0.92. This is fine. So we've got this set up. Let's scale the sizes so it fits all the space of these buttons. Let me see. Oh, I think it's fine. We don't need to have all of it 100% fit. Let's start by adding the first element. Let's have the first button. Um, let's uh, not see these stuff. How can I disable the visualize? We're going to have to be using the same pattern in here. Instead of vertical, we're going to use horizontal. And we need the whole th stuff to fit the panel. Like we need the buttons to fill everything. We don't need empty spaces. First of all, let's uh, add the horizontal horizontal yep and let's keep this as a middle center it's fine and in here we need to control the width actually no my mistake to control the height probably i think yeah that that's, should be it let me try took 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 nope and the second thing we should control use G. here we go so we have how many buttons we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got six buttons. Here we go. So let's get it button one, button one, button two, button three. Oh, that's two. Let's just name it quickly. Here we go. To be honest, the best practice is to fix of one button and then modify all the stuff. So what we need to do next is we need to change the type the text to a smaller size, way too small. Let's go with 14. Let's let's hide this panel and see how they look in the background. So they are similarly the same size. Let's make it 13 bold. And let's call it button because uh, we're going to follow exactly the same pattern here. It's it's fully capital letters. And I think it should be Bold per se. It's, I mean, it's somehow bold. It depends on the font that you use. I'm using 
default liberation sans SDF. But I still see, feel the size is slightly big. So let's keep it as it is. Make this bold. And then we're good with the button itself. The second thing we need to do is use your own sprites. Right now, the sprites has it has a fully uh, rectangle one, but the default button comes with uh, some sort of a you know like soft edge. So what I can do is probably um, I mean if you want to get the same effect, you can just remove. Yep, just remove the the sprite itself. So I'm gonna do the same way. Remove the sprite, so let it be an... What's happening? Here we go. Yes. Oh, that's a nice bug. Okay. Here we go. So now we got the buttons set up with their respective sprites, right? But we can see there's a tiny small, uh, so tiny small, the same. There's a small spacing between each button. So this one is quite easy. If you remember from the old video, we have this value spacing, which is going to be separating the, the elements. So right now it's zero. That's why you can see, if you go back to shade it, you can see it's flushing to everything. So we need to be slightly more. Let's go with five. I think that's a good enough space. You can see the buttons are a bit different because some of them are wider than others. Like the map is smaller, that one bigger. For this, uh, using the, the horizontal and then controlling the size, you will not be able to have this feature because when you enable this button, this one forces all the children to have a width that fits inside the whole thing. Like right now, if I disable it, it's gonna nothing's gonna change, but then you can play with these values, which is probably what you what you want. If if you can apply, for example, the first button should be this much, the second button should be like fifty, this should be hundred. You know, it's large button, so uh, you can work with this like this, or you can just click Control Child Width size, and it will auto wide everything. So let's uh, change the text inside each of those quest map command let's have them quest map command and then we can change the button sizes later on so what else here Almory item shop store Wait, I have a. Do I have an exact number? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Oh my God, I am bad at math. Here we go. This is the last one. So this should be store. Item shop. Oh, I have I have it hidden, so don't worry. It's still here. And Amory. So we ha let's try and make it the same. I mean pattern so quest is same size map is smaller command and wider and armor is wider so let's do it let's disable the control the width reduce the map to uh, let's say uh, 55 okay even 50 is enough so we have a 50 the command let's make it slightly larger to fit it up to be honest this could be even smaller this one this big and the armory is fine item shop needs to be slightly larger stores or store can be small slightly smaller so let's go with 55 here we go so we got the buttons set up and their text so we now we have to do the uh what's it called the selected ones so right now we can actually change it but i can put it as the example itself so you get a script and you have to reference the buttons or put a script in each button. It doesn't matter how you go with approach with it. But the best approach to change the to change the um, state of the button is um, by changing the color here. You can do other stuff like um, changing the the dim light of the button, like make it darker and stuff. But I would suggest just change the normal color to whatever is needed. Like I think it's like yellowish 
something, I don't know. Let's just hide this whole thing. Let me click this and go here. I have a button, so let's make this image fully opaque. Go to the th fourth button. Let's enable it. Click here and let's choose this color. I just want it to be exactly the same color. That's fine. Let's go back to the preview, make it 0.2. That's fine, that's good. Everything's dandy. And uh, this can be chosen upper center, right? Doesn't matter. Let's keep it middle center. I want everything to be centralized coming out from the middle out. Also, I feel now we, we, let's decrease the height slightly, just slightly. Here we go. So we can have slightly almost the same thing. I mean, it's, oh wow, it's the same thing. Again, uh, use your own font to make sure that you have the best uh, outcome. Here we go. So with this, whatever script you have for button you know, control or UI control, whenever you click on a button, you have to change that button to this color, to this exact color, changing the, uh, basically the button and the normal color. You can change this one if you want. It's actually, actually it's better to change this one. I thought I was changing this one. Apparently I'm changing the other one. Keep this as white, Never mind. This is to apply the effect of um, hovering. Like if you can see here, right now it's, it applies the white. But if we hover on it, it's gonna have, uh, you know, like a slightly dimmer. Let's see how it looks here. See, like if I hover it, you can't barely see it, but you can see it's actually changing slightly the, uh, and when I click on it, it becomes grayish. So those effects are fine. Um, let's get back to our main concern here, which is the button layout. So we have these buttons set up here and you can do the same thing for any other stuff. If you have a button in the bottom or, or like top right, top left, all you have to make sure is you've got the anchor properly set because if the anchor is wrong, the whole layout is going to be wrong. You can see here, even if you change it to whatever, like, you know what, let me just scale as much as I want. So when I scale it, the buttons remain the same place. I mean, position properly. With this episode, we have set up the upper button, panel buttons. So for the next one, we're gonna start doing the corner buttons. And I'm sure, I think we're gonna, they have almost the same structure. This is also gonna be horizontal, this is also horizontal, but they have slightly some different changes, things happening inside. But all in all, this is everything for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe and like button and join our Discord where we can help you with anything, any feedback, any other stuff, apart from the comments. We can help you up, up there. And uh, I'll see you everybody next one. Bye-bye.